No matter where we are in the world, we are surrounded by buses. Whether they're lofty double-deckers, long-distance coaches or electric trolley buses, they're essential for getting people from A to B. However, in a small town in the West Midlands, they can also be your worst nightmare. Found in North East Worcestershire, Redditch is the home of clay and needles, but now it is more commonly known for its bus service. Whether late, broken down or not turning up at all, Redditch's bus service is notoriously known for their awful service. So, you might be wondering, OK Annie, a lot of towns and cities across Britain have buses like this. What makes Redditch so special? Well, with the help of the public and a special guest, I've took it upon myself to find out why. On the 21st, I made my first move. It had been a turbulent past week and there was something about the five plus hours I must have spent at bus stops that week that hit different. Recently, I had noticed the drivers had gotten in the habit of leaving the bus station at the same time, meaning only certain parts of the route were being covered at a time. After witnessing this, I got on the bus just longing to be anywhere other than the bus station. On my 10 minute journey, I witnessed speeding, the driver ignoring people ringing the bell to get off, and even the driver telling a new mother that he didn't stop for her because she hadn't wheeled her pram to the front of the bus in time. I arrived home and got to work. It was time for me, a lifetime bus catcher, to take the plunge and type an email to retire themselves. What I really wanted was to find a solution to help the situation in our town. I sympathise with how many messages they must get, but it didn't stop me from stressing that this is a serious issue. I explained how this personally affects me and the others around me with disabilities. I explained how often the problems occur, and I even tried to put myself in their shoes by mentioning the growing rivalry between drivers and the public. Ideally, I wanted a meeting in person where we could speak things out in full, and I signed off by letting them know I was looking forward to their response. I suppose this little email shouldn't have meant so much to me, but my life has, in a way, always been leading up to this. In 2008, as part of a £1.5 million investment, a fleet of new red diamond buses were introduced into the town. Slim and full of promise, the local papers boasted about them being the most environmentally friendly buses in Europe. But, much like the financial crash of the same year, they brought nothing but misery. For the next four years, they were weaned in more and more until before we knew it, first was gone. After an angry few years, 2015 saw the birth of the Facebook page Diamond Buses Complaints Redditch, giving residents a voice. It appears they didn't get too far, as after many turbulent years and bad press, they still have a monopoly over the town. More recently, Redditch's bus service has been making national news, as they were planning on getting rid of a large majority of the bus services. It gave a clear introspective into how the company in charge was feeling, so now it was time to turn to the community. Spotted Redditch is a Facebook page where people go to report on the community, snitch on neighbours and most importantly, complain about the town. Perfect. I submitted a request to post about my plans to make a video documentary asking for people's day-to-day -day experiences with the service, looking for rounded opinions to deflect against any biases that I could show if I was on my own. The comments started pouring in, and at the time of making this, there are 182 comments, with many people sharing very similar stories. Words appeared over and over again, such as jokes, hours, and nightmare. However, one comment really stuck out. Happy to engage with this video if helpful. Upon further investigation, I found out that this councillor was a cabinet member with responsibility for highways and transport. It was just what we needed. Naturally, I took him up on this offer straight away and after a few back and forth, we set an interview date for the 10th of August. This is when it hit me that what was once a small vent about the bus service had now turned into a rounded video filled with solid facts, public opinions and now political figures. It was serious and I had to put my all into making this passion project one for the community. So imagine my surprise when Diamond then got back to me agreeing to a call. Okay. So it is 10.41 a.m. on the 15th of July. Um, I'm supposed to have had a call with the Assistant Operations Manager at the Redditch Depot. Um, and he has not called me yet. We've already agreed this is perfectly on brand. But at the same time, um, 
it's quite disappointing. So what I'm going to do is take it upon myself, try and make a call and um, see if I get to anything back. I don't know what I expected to hear when I made this call, but it wasn't what came next. So um, I've just got off a call with the operations manager himself. He answered the phone. He has told me he was actually just about to email me. He said actually there'd been a collision, which um, yeah, so yeah, I obviously said to him, hope uh, that gets sorted. That's quite um, scary to think about. Um, so yeah, we have rescheduled for this time next week. So <sighs> let's hope that happens. In hindsight, this did give me more time. So I was going to put it to good use. It was time to talk to the public face to face and see how they were feeling in the moment. We scouted the most popular hotspots, dusted off the microphone and got the views that matter. Do you get the bus very often? Or? Quite regularly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what's your experiences been like recently or within the past few weeks? Terrible, really, because they're putting on big buses. No coaches, when they can put small buses, which make it more profitable. Most of the big buses are just... And I'll run in, I'll be with one of them during the day. Yeah. But when the rush out, it's so are you a regular like to the 5758 route or do you take any yeah, of the I'm others? Yeah, regular. Right, right. It's a nightmare just trying to get on the bus. Yeah. You can't, you can't use the actual timetable, you can't use the timetable online. Yeah. So to be able to plan out, let's say like if I had an interview, I wouldn't be able to plan out the trip. Especially the school times, like you'll be waiting like two, three buses would just drive past you. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be waiting for ages and it's just, it's not on. Like, I understand that they've just brought out another company, but why buy out another company if you can't look after the one you've already got? I saw Diamond actually posted a blog to their site on the 18th of July saying their services have seen a massive improvement um, after they did, <laughs> after they did, um, a kind of review of their services. So I was just going to ask you, do you think you've seen an improvement in the last two to three weeks or I'd no? I'd say no, it's the opposite. It's worse. <laughs> Would you say you've seen this improvement? No. In fact there are people that I talk to that aren't even from the area that know about how bad Diamond's doing in Redditch. I've personally called Diamond out on Twitter. Yeah. Um, because uh, when the heat wave just went past um, I, I had to go see family for medical reasons yeah. and um, because you know buses come for two hours wow. I ended up walking and had a seizure. I'm going to be talking to uh, our councillor Mike Rouse next week um, who's in charge of transport around Redditch. Um, if you had any questions to ask him like about the buses and if there could be any improvements like what might you want to ask? It's like it says uh, you can phone them up and find out what the timetable is. Yeah. But you get uh, more or less like it's flogged off. Mm. You don't get the exact time. Then you find you, it's usually about an hour later. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Have you tried contacting Diamond then before or yes. calling them up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, I'm at the top of uh, King's Cross, uh, Edges Cross. Right, yeah. And it's quite a steep walk. It's a walk <laughs> Yeah. Especially yeah, if you've got groceries. Mm, yeah. You know, getting local buses that would be running the regular. Mm. You know, maybe five, ten minutes on the bus. Yeah. But it's not here. My yeah. question is Does he understand that buses are very important to people with medical needs or to the elderly and does he care that we're being neglected in transportation and if so why are you letting the issue go on so long they clearly need new management or we need a new bus system in place because i can't believe that the bus people and the council are letting this slide yeah like it, it's disgusting it was clear how people were feeling and with two interviews with Diamond and the council on the horizon I felt confident knowing the residents were standing right beside me. Then came the 22nd of July, take two on the call with Diamond. Okay so turns out we weren't too successful this time either. 
Good morning. Happy Friday. I hope you're having a better Friday than last week. Was hoping to hear from you around 10am today, but no luck. Let me know if there's a more suitable time for you, either today or next week. Surely, we must hear something. Anything? It was now the 1st of August and I'd still heard nothing from Diamond. It was slightly frustrating knowing we'd set a date, we traded emails and now they'd just gone silent? <sighs> I decided to email them again. Hi, hope you had a great weekend. Any update on when you might like to call? But to no avail, it was time to give it a one last shot. I explained to them about the call we had already booked in, a timeline of the chase I had already tried to give and reiterated that I would really like this call to happen. That seemed to be my last chance. It was now time to focus on the here and now. Here I present to you my interview with Mike Rouse. I'm Mike Rouse. I'm the Worcestershire County Council Cabinet Member for Highways and Transport, which covers the buses. I started off by asking Mike about his experiences with the buses. So I've experienced some of the issues uh, that people are encountering, such as what happens when a bus doesn't turn up when it's supposed to um, uh, turn up. So, so I'm aware that the service is not where it needs to be. I think the services are on a journey of improvement and they are a lot better than they were 10 years ago. But 10 years from now, we want to be able to look back and say that actually they really have gone a journey of an improvement and they're, they're much better. And they're something that people choose to use because they want to go on the bus because it's a more convenient option for them and not simply using the bus because it's the transport of last resort. Yeah. Would you say you have a long-term plan for that because you mentioned better than 10 years ago but as a resident of Redditch I've noticed lots of ups and downs yeah. with the buses and bad patches, good patches. Um, yeah. So have you got kind of that timeline laid out? So what we have is a plan to review, enhance and secure the future of, of bus services across Worcestershire. And the way that, way that works is we've got a review process going on at the moment to understand exactly where we are with the network, what's viable, what's not viable, what's going to need some level of public subsidy in order to keep those socially necessary transport uh, services going for people. Enhancement means uh, what's called a statutory enhanced partnership, but it enables the county council to have more control over the service, the reliability, uh, the performance, the uh, punctuality, the bus shelters, the library, the timetables, the information, uh, as well as a little bit of interaction on the pricing, although we can't set the pricing, mm -hmm. we can introduce uh, tickets such as network tickets and so on, which will enable you to get from one end of Worcestershire to the other for a, for a simple, simple price. We're looking to do that before the end of 2022, so we're making good progress on that. And then the other part of it, in terms of the short-term measures, or slightly more medium-term, is what's called demand responsive transport and that's an app on your phone that enables you to uh, call up a bus a bit like you would for a, an uber or a taxi uh, and be able to get from where you want to go to where you want to be um, um, quickly and, and conveniently using a demand responsive uh, option and that experience when we get to it will be transformational if you're interested in more information about the demand responsive app it's actually already in use in bromsgrove under the name worcestershire on demand it's been on trial for just over a year and at the moment there's been a mostly positive response over time more zones are being added to increase locations passengers can use the app if you have had a chance or get to use the app let me know what your experience has been like this idea sounded great for the younger generations who were using apps like this all the time but I wanted to know if older generations who don't own a smartphone had been considered. Here's what Mike had to say. We're going to work with uh, the likes of Age UK, who will help us on this journey in terms of informing and educating uh, and working with uh, uh, pensioners. And they're a very important voice, Age UK, that works with pensioner groups. But what we will provide for anybody who needs it uh, will be a telephone number where they can ring up and they can book a service through the telephone. It was encouraging to know that there is both a short and long-term plan in place to get to the root of the problems with the buses, but there were more events I'd heard about right around the corner that I wanted to get more details on. Continuing to talk about the future of the bus service, um, I have been looking into the new mm. bus travel task force that yes. is coming in in, I believe, September, yes. and that starts. Um, so for viewers watching, um, could you maybe describe kind of what that is and kind of what's on the agenda of like what to do there, who's involved, that kind of thing. So the Bus Travel Task Force was a way to enable more stakeholders to get involved in the conversation that we're having about buses and to help them understand the journey that we're on with regards to the changes. Our stakeholders here will be the, the bus operators, 
uh, the council, the councillors, uh, the members of parliament, uh, organisations such as Age UK, uh, Transport Focus and other passenger transport groups, and any other groups that, that deal with uh, so community transport providers and other groups that deal with uh, pensioners or vulnerable people. The idea being that we run these tasks for task forces for uh, a couple of months in September, October, November, and then the stakeholder uh, panel for the enhanced partnership takes over and that's where the public can then get directly involved if they wish to do so. So, I know many people have wanted ways to help contribute to fixing our bus service. In the description is a link to the Redditch Borough Council website to see a list of councillors that can help you communicate your problems and solutions. I've also included Mike's email if you wish to contact him directly. For any updates you might want on meetings, you can visit either the council's website, Diamond's website, and later down the line the Enhanced Partnership site, all of which are listed in the description too. In the interview, I also asked Mike about the potential mass cancellations of our bus services. Since then, I've been thrilled to see the announcement that many have been saved, and conversations are continuing about any routes still at risk for as long as necessary, so that empty buses become a thing of the past. Mike also expanded on some concerns the public had raised about getting passengers to and from medical appointments. Now what we will also do as part of this is prioritise things like hospitals. So when you're going from Redditch to Bromsgrove, it will be via those hospital sites um, as part of those routes as, uh, as well. So completely aware that people depend on these buses for their job or for their health or for seeing their loved ones and, and caring for their loved ones um, yeah. as, uh, uh, as well. We can't let them down and I won't let them down because that's what I'm here in the job to do. Yeah. I'm here to be their voice, their representative and to make sure that the bus service delivers uh, for, for them. One of the last questions for me that's kind of come up um, as well about um, when first buses were in before ah, Diamond. Yeah. People have asked, "Will is there any chance we'll ever kind of see competition in Redditch again mm. with mm. different bus services or maybe even things changing? Um, so I think what I would say in regard to first buses, they were present um, uh, in Redditch and, and they were, um, so they were also uh, prior to that, there was Midland Red as, 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 as well, uh, many, many years ago, uh, which also suffered from declining uh, uh, numbers. We're now in a position uh, where Diamond sort of essentially has a monopoly around uh, the services uh, in, in Redditch. Mm. Other operators can come along if they wish to do so. And under the Bus Services Act 2017, if you and I decided we wanted to create a bus company, we could create one tomorrow and we could start running routes um, uh, throughout Redditch if we wish to do so, if we think that there's money in it for us uh, as, a, as a bus private bus um, uh, company. For over 30 years, uh, we have not had bus services in the way that people seem to think they, they operate. We don't tender the services. It's not a contract that then Diamond come along, bid for, and we choose whether to have Diamond first and, and, and so on. That's not how it works. They have control over where they go, what routes they operate, and when they operate them, and all the rest of it. That's the part of the deregulated uh, model. The enhanced partnership will help a little bit because a lot of the concerns that people raise about Diamond can actually start to be fed into the enhanced partnership around complaints and issues and concerns and we can look to get those resolved through the enhanced partnership rather than going directly to the operator. And one of the things that you might want to float out there actually is is when I keep talking about this enhanced partnership I think it's a it's a technical term yeah. Um, to describe uh, coming together of the operators, county council, into a, a sort of almost like a company. They call it Transport for West Midlands up in up in Birmingham yeah. uh, and everybody kind of knows what Transport for West Midlands means and what it stands for and all the rest of it. We are going to need a name for mm. the new enhanced partnership at some point as well. Travel Worcestershire, Travel for Worcestershire, who knows. Um, so if anybody's got any ideas as to what we can call the enhanced partnership, then they're very welcome to leave it in the comments or send it in to you and we can have a, have a, have a look at that. Well, thank you so much for very talking welcome. to me today. Thanks for having me. I'm always keen to listen, always keen to hear ideas and always very happy to have conversations with people. Thank you for having me. So, there we had it. Mike had been delightful to talk to and a lot of myths and rumours have been cleared up. It seems there's a steady plan in place to improve the bus service and I'll be keeping an eye to see how much progress is being made. I also got a couple of new contacts from Mike at Rotala Operations Manager Bob Baker and CEO Simon Dunn. It was a final chance to get a response and it would be coming right from the top. And they responded. Let's see what they had to say. What is your current understanding of the views residents of Redditch have with their bus service? The travelling public of Redditch are demanding. They expect high frequency, high quality services at low prices. 
Bus prices in Redditch are within the lowest in the country and it is difficult to balance cost, quality and frequency. The pandemic following reductions in travelling numbers has made this even more difficult. I also explained what I knew about the council's plans to improve the bus service. I wanted to know from a Diamond Retala point of view, what is currently in the works for the short and long term future of Redditch's bus service and what has been considered in the lead up to these decisions. He let me know. At the present moment in time, we are working with all local stakeholders. We feel that local engagement is key. He also mentioned the first bus travel task force meeting where they had discussed many topics, including service quality, areas of influence from local councillors and MPs, and the need for ongoing engagement amongst a range of other things. More on that later. The statement from the CEO were definitely a mixed bag. On one hand, he had been very honest with me about the corporate perspective of what's going on with the bus service. But on the other, at least he's close to the situation and is having a say in the process. After talking to both parties, I think the dream lies in the enhanced partnership. If they can go into that with the same passion Mike had in the interview and the same focuses as they had in the task force meeting, I think we can finally see the evolution in the bus service that we've been waiting for. Before I wrap up this video, I'm already happy to report on some changes happening in Redditch. The 2nd of September saw the first meeting of the Bus Travel Task Force. The bulk of the discussion focused around the demand responsive transport app and how it will affect existing bus routes. They also discussed what will happen post March 2023 when the bus routes that were recently saved will be reviewed again. If you want to have your views heard, their next meeting is happening in Worcester, so you can use the links below to get in contact with your local councillor. On September 3rd, a £2 fare cap was announced for single bus fares spanning from January to March 2023. It's not quite as good as the £2.50 fare cap that was rumoured for day tickets, but with the cost of living crisis, who knows, it could be right around the corner. The last thing I want to highlight is the changes in the buses recently. Whilst I've been filming this documentary, I've noticed the buses actually living up to their timetable. Although they're not 100%, the odd five minute wait has been a welcome surprise. We've also seen some of our buses getting a new look. Old Johnson's models have been introduced to the route, bringing with them leather chairs, fold-out tables and even bells on the back of seats for maximum convenience. It's been a pleasure to ride these a few times and I really hope they're not just temporary hires. Despite all the positivity, it's still uncertain what the future holds. As I mentioned in my interview with Mike, there have been a lot of ups and downs with Diamond buses over the years, so it'll be a long time before we can see any real change. Personally for me, I've noticed the positives because I've been focusing down on the buses recently, but for the regular commuter, they're still going to have seen all the negatives. As silly as it may sound, Diamond's poor service is ingrained into the Redditch culture. You could even see in this video, the council were more eager to help me, even though they have no real control, than Ratala themselves. So for Diamond to really make a real change, they're going to have to polish up and keep up the high performance before the residents are really happy with the bus service. Oh my god, there's a... <laughs> Even that one in front who's also on the bus, like, he's trying to pull out. <laughs> oh my god. What are the chances the bus driver's just gonna get out of Malabar? He spent, oh, I wanted him to get out of He more. spent all that time beeping and then he pulled round in front of the car anyway. <laughs> Look at him. A peaceful resolution. The sad, the sad, the sad part. Just sat there. I hope he feels bad. There he goes. <laughs>